Still on Arima modeling, this video covers step 3, diagnostics. Remember, we have covered step 1, identification. I have another video on step 2, estimation. So this video is strictly on diagnostic checking. It is important that you watch these requisite videos to give you the foreknowledge of what we have done previously. If you don't watch these videos, you may not be able to understand what I'll be doing under diagnostics. So I will encourage you to please watch these three videos before you watch the one on diagnostics. There are things you need to know. Remember, the most appropriate model that we chose is ARIMA 313. I showed you how we came about this from the video in identification and how we estimated it in my video under estimation. And I also indicated the, uh, the yardsticks for selecting the most appropriate model. The model must have the most significant lag. It must have the lowest volatility. It must have the highest log likelihood ratio. And it must have the lowest AIC. So once a model exhibits such characteristics, that is the most ideal or appropriate model to use for forecasting. And on our diagnostics, we are going to be looking at the residual correlogram. The residual correlogram will tell you if there's any information that is yet to be captured in the ARIMA model. This is because a flat correlogram is the most ideal. If a lag is significant in the residual correlogram, then you have to re-estimate the model again, check the residual correlogram, then you cannot be sure if there is no information yet to be captured. But in doing all this, avoid overfitting a model. What do I mean by overfitting a model? There are times after you have estimated the model and plotted the correlogram of the residuals, and you still observe some significant lags, maybe in the PACF, and you may want to start capturing every significant lag. Please be careful. Remember, parsimony is a watchword. So avoid overfitting an ARIMA model. So let's go to STATA to see how we can perform diagnostics on the chosen ARIMA 313 model. Remember, we are still using the data we obtained from Annie Kachova's Econometrics Academy. The data is here. You can see it in the variable section. The log file is still on, tracking everything we've done. And the code I'll be executing under diagnostics are all written out here in the do file. So taking you back to the chosen model, which is ARIMA 313. This is the result again. And here we see the outputs. All the six coefficients are significant. The three coefficients of the AR components are significant. And the three coefficients of the MA components are significant. Although the volatility is the lowest among the six models that we estimated. So sigma here represents the volatility of the variable. And below that, we have the AIC and the BIC statistics. They are also the lowest among the six models that we estimated. So this is the ARIMA 313 model that we are going to perform some diagnostics on before we use it to forecast the PPI series. So here under diagnostics, what do you need to do? Let's estimate the model again, then predict the residual, that is obtain the residuals because we need to plot the correlogram of the residuals to see whether it's flat or not. So the first thing we have to do is to rerun the model, which is this, I highlight this, I execute. And the next thing to do is to predict the residual, I highlight and I execute it. Now let me show you the data editor where you have the predicted residuals. So this is the residuals indicated here. So having obtained the residuals, the next code to execute is to plot the correlogram of the residuals using this syntax. Is highlighted and executes. So here we have the correlogram of the residuals. From what we can see, it is flat. What do I mean by flat? All the lags are within the 95% confidence interval, indicating that there are no uncaptured information. So we can say that yes, ARIMA 313 is the appropriate model for forecasting. To be very sure, let us plot the PAC of the residuals and see how it looks like. I highlight the command here, PAC, and execute it. Here we have the correlogram of the residuals for the PAC. We can see here that yes, it is not so flat, 
because if you look at and let's say lag 10 11 12 13 if you look at lag 14 and lag 16 they are significant and even up to lag 28 but because parsimony is a watchword i will not be reestimating the model by including all these lags so i'm going to stop at arima 313 model and conclude that it is an ideal model to be used for forecasting. So let's go to PowerPoints where I have moved all these graphs for better explanation. So like I said before, this is the ACF of the Corellogram for the residuals for the Arima 313 model, it is flat, lies within the 95% confidence interval. The little note here states that the Corellogram of the ACF for the residuals is flat, which indicates that all information has been captured. Therefore, the forecast will be based on this model let's look at the pacf this is the pacf correlogram for the residuals for arima 313 model it is not so flat because it is still showing some significance at lags 13 15 and 28 you can see here they are outside the 95 percent confidence interval indicating that they are significant but because parsimony is a watchword those lags will not be considered and this model will not be re-estimated therefore the forecast will be based on ARIMA 313 model. So again, in conclusion, parsimony is a watchword for the Box Jenkins methodology. Do not include redundant variables in the model. Remember, a flat correlogram of the residual is the most ideal. You must avoid overfitting an ARIMA model to a data series. And always know that the forecast must be based on the final chosen ARIMA model. Lastly, always remember that there can never be an exact or perfect ARIMA model because ARIMA modeling is more of an art than of science. I have covered identification, estimation, and diagnostic checking. Please don't go away. I'll be back with my video on ARIMA forecasting. Again, please do not substitute video tutorials for reading. Read up all these references, look at journal articles that use ARIMA modeling, look at the way they explained their results, how they came about their methodology, and try to adapt your research with what they've done. It's been good having you around. Thank you for supporting my channel. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Share my videos and my links to your friends, to your students, and to your cohorts. Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users. Once again, don't go away. I'll be right back with a video on ARIMA forecasting.